All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Jamal English here from EDM Lead Network. I wanted to come to you guys and talk through a lot of the big changes that are coming down in the industry right now, one of which being a lot of the changes coming on with the call pre-ping. Um, everybody that's not familiar with this, I want you guys to know that this is going to become a new standard in the industry. And it's going to become a new norm in how a lot of campaigns are going to be ran for the future. Uh, it just allows a whole lot more transparency. It allows a lot more control. And it just kind of makes sure that the client has a much better experience than calls getting connected and disconnected and connected and disconnected all the time. Um, so I do think that this is going to be for the betterment of the industry. I do want you guys to know that we are actively changing and adapting a lot of our campaigns to a lot of these new, more recent configurations with the call pre ping system. But I wanted to make sure I took a moment and kind of broke down kind of how it's set up, how these campaigns are ran, and make sure that we answer any questions that anybody may have in order to get started. So let's go ahead and kick it off. All right. So you guys, I want to make sure that I, I, I break this down for you guys and make sure that everybody understands exactly how this is going to work. Um, so what I did is I actually created a, a workflow so that way you guys could have a visual aid and understanding how this system actually works. So the first thing that I want to walk through is kind of like the one step pre ping configurations, just so you guys have an understanding of how it works. So imagine a consumer. OK, this consumer is either on the phone with either a verification agent or they're actually going online looking for services um, once they actually qualify or are wanting to make a, a, a move, they then call a phone number. That phone number is going to be connected to a call routing system. Okay. And you got multiple different options available in the industry. I just gave you a couple quick options here just to show you what you could use. Um, those call routing systems then configure the buyer specs. Now, typically when you receive specs from uh, your client or whoever's going to be buying calls from you, you're really going to want to make sure that you look at them. So this is an example of the specs that we generate for all of the publishers that we work with on all of our pre ping campaigns. Now, I want to point out of some very specific things uh, on these specs. So first thing is you're usually going to see a, like a campaign ID and a campaign key. These are always defaulted. For us, you will receive these specs on your actual insertion order you'll get your campaign id and your campaign key in your insertion order so if you're looking for it this is that's where it's at um, then you're going to uh, include the color id so these two are hard coded based off of what your advertiser provides you and then this is the color id of the customer so when they click on that phone number and they call in your call routing system is going to read that phone number of the consumer for the phone number that they're using okay that caller id is then with most of these call routing systems going to geocode itself with the zip code this is important you guys because this zip code will allow more uh complex routing to occur on the back end okay so now going back to the workflow once those specs are configured with your call routing system you can configure your call routing system to ping all of the buyers available in the queue and it will route based off of whatever factors you dictate. So one potential factor could be whoever's the highest bidder, for example. Another factor could be whoever has the lowest buffer. So whoever has the lowest billable duration. So you may have one buyer that pays, you know, a hundred dollars, but you know, calls aren't billable until the customer stays on the phone for five minutes, as opposed to you may have another client that's paying you half that amount, but you're paying, you're getting paid when a customer stays on the phone for 30 seconds, for example. So you can route based off of all these conditional factors and then performance in most situations typically comes down to like EPC performance. You know, what's the earning per call performance? And then you could ping on these buyers. And then if there's multiple buyers available, it will look at all of the potential buyers. It'll compare all of their different uh, payouts and duration. Those payouts and duration will go back to your call routing system. It will take in these uh, parameters into consideration, and then it will choose who to send the advertiser to. For the sake of this example, I chose the highest bidder. So this person is paying more than these other ones, so they got the call. So based off of that, this is how the, the logic of the pre-ping system would work. 
Now, you guys might be asking, all right, how do I get this set up and get this configured? Look, all these different call routing systems know that people can't configure these by themselves. They know this. That's why they have the support teams available. And one thing that I like to do is look at the documentation that's available online with most of these call routing tools, just to know what's available and how easy it is to go ahead and configure some of this stuff yourself. Uh, Ringbot has a very thorough knowledge base. Retriever has another one as well. And you'll also notice that all these different call routing softwares call this same exact functionality something different you know like ringba call it ring trees and real-time bidding you know uh retriever would call it call reservation um lee's pedia calls it ping tree calls so like you can see all these differences on all these different platforms your biggest priority is to make sure that you work with the the support team that's going to allow you to get these campaigns configured the fastest and allow your 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 queue to ever like to never stop being dynamic you know, because this is honestly where the future is going because you make more money, you know, because when you think about like how a lot of the campaign configurations are set up um, right now is most of the campaigns are static. So let's imagine for a second that you had all these buyers available, but you were selling to somebody else who's also selling to somebody else who's only getting paid this much. OK. For you to be able to get accommodated you you can't get paid based off of what this buyer pays you have to get paid off of what the average is of all of them so you usually would get the lowest payout with the worst duration okay to accommodate all the buyers in the queue with the real-time bidding you're able to get plugged into everything and then you get paid on whatever the highest bidding logic is or whatever the bidding logic is that's going to allow those calls to get consume first and foremost and also make sure you make the most money you know i promise you nobody that you're working with is is in the business of generating and receiving calls that they can't monetize nobody's looking for that so this is one great way to actually be able to build a, a simple logical system to be able to route calls allow for everything to every variable to be dynamic and allow you to be able to monetize your traffic the most effectively um, now, I just told you the one step preping uh, process. So one step meaning that the only time that the calls are getting pinged is when it hits the system. So let me tell you what a two step system looks like right now. So we personally internally use a two step system. This is probably the best system that I've seen to kind of eliminate a lot of the reporting issues. OK, um, the reason why is because everything is the same up until the point where the call is routed. So in a one-step system, as soon as the buyer is selected, the routing logic is analyzed, that decision is made, the call is sent. With a two-step system, once the bids are sent and you accept the bid in a two-step system, you now have to request the phone number, okay? This is important because and a lot of the two-step pre-ping processes, the phone numbers are never ending and they're always changing, okay? So when you think about it, just kind of think that, uh, and this is kind of why like you see like Retriever, for example, calls their system call reservation. So how it works is in these situations, you request a phone number because there's a pool of numbers available at the point in which like, um, like let's say I'm, I get 10 pings, right? I only have five calls available, but I only accept five of those pings. I have five numbers available for those calls to get routed and connected at that point specifically. So once those calls get connected, that number will come available again in the pool, and then they're able to send more calls. So this is a quick perspective of kind of how that request phone number feature works. Um, and then once they request the phone number, and they receive the number at that point they send the call so it's a little bit more of a redundancy process there but it does ensure reporting is more lined up um, you're not making mistakes routing calls that shouldn't be routed so if someone genuinely wins the bid you want to accept trigger that secondary link request that other phone number so that way you can send the call so just to show you what that looks like within our posting specs so this will document what the step one is this is the the first ping they will send us the campaign ID, campaign key, caller ID, and the zip code. Based off of that, 
we will return a response that says we can accept it, which is this true right here. We will pay you $28 with a duration of 95 seconds. And then if you would like to send the call, here's the URL for you to request a phone number. Okay. So this is how you request a phone number. So if they accept that and then they request a phone number, we'll go ahead and send them back everything, verifying it a second time. This is where the redundancy comes in, where we tell them again what the payout is, what the buffer is, and then the transfer phone number to send the call. And then at this point, those calls will get connected with the system. So this is kind of what a two-step process looks like. Um, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope this provides clarity. Uh, there's multiple different options that you guys can take advantage of on the marketplace um, to accomplish this exact same thing. Don't only think that these three are the ones that are available to you. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. But I hope this provides clarity. Talk to you soon.